It's that time of week. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, so this, it was something that was always on my list, but I never really got around to it. And then I started seeing an example of it with notes, and uh, I wanted to get in on the action. It just looked really interesting to me. And so, I ended up picking up a hardcover edition of the Dragonlance Chronicle. <laughs> the Dragonlance Chronicles, not Chronicles. There's like some glue, this is a used copy, some glue discoloration on the side of it. I don't know if this is from, this is a dust jacket that's on it. That's the normal uninteresting cover, hard cover. I don't know if that's from the previous owner or the packaging. You got some tape here, but uh, yeah. So w the reason why I picked this up, I'm all wound up. Let me unlock this and we can get a little bit closer here. Is because of these, the annotations. I am really excited to get into these annotations and just find out, I love, this artwork is so great on the inside, and find out what the authors were thinking at different portions of this book, right? I did not know there was going to be tiny little sketches. That's dope. Look at that. The evolution of a Sivak Draconian from rough sketch to lethal weapon of the Dark Queen. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that is great. This is actually uh, Sturm's first traumatic encounter with the Salamnic Code. is shown in Michael Williams' novel, The Oath and the Measure. That was a good book. I love the annotations. I mean, it's nice to have a hardcover copy because I've had the, the Dragonlance Chronicles in two different editions, the original release and then the one I have uh, on my shelf right now. But they get messed up and uh, destroyed really easily because of the soft, I love this, uh, because of the soft cover nature. Oh, check this. I did not, I can't even get to it. Come on now. What? Come on. Larry Elmore sketched the earliest portrayal of Caraman and Raceland. Note the Flying Citadel's flat, geometrically precise base as if sawed not ripped from the ground. The twins, on the other hand, changed relatively little in later pictures. Yeah, that flat base. <laughs> That's great. You know, the, um, I didn't know there was gonna be the, like little image plates in there. I'm gonna have to search for the others. In the original, um, oh, I'm sorry, not the original. I'm, I'm sort of losing my mind here as I'm looking at this. Um, in Talada's source material, it's the Talada's gnomes that create flying citadels. And there's a total of seven of them. And uh, of those seven, only three actually exist. One actually works. So I wonder if the flying citadel that we all know, sorry, got dog hair right there, that we all know uh, if that's from Talada's actually. Interesting thought. All right, thank you. For the previous owner, I don't mind that there's a little bit of discoloration and stuff. I just appreciate that you're willing to give it up. And uh, I'm going to enjoy going through this. You guys have a fantastic afternoon. Slan Javar.